Hello, this is Inka, and I am back again having spent the past 30 days with a $155 blender. So this is part of a series where some of us on the About To Eat team basically spend some time with a kitchen appliance or equipment around a month or so, and then we come back and share with you our findings, our thoughts and feelings. I had a lovely time last time with my toaster, and as somebody who uses the blender quite a bit, as you might have seen in my cooking endeavors, I really wanted to give this Beast Blender a try, which in all honesty, I have been getting a lot of targeted ads for, which is part of the reason why I'm so curious, and I guess the, the ads worked a little bit. Now the price point of $155 might not seem like a lot for a blender, given that some of the premium ones can cost double the amount or more, but considering how this kind of falls under the category of a personal blender, it is actually on the pricier side. I also purchased a few add-ons like this custom spatula, some extra containers, a hydration system, which brings the price closer to $204. I'm very intrigued by the full potential of the Beast Blender here because it is designed to be sturdier than your average personal blender, which isn't known to be the most versatile. But even the container themselves are actually thicker and heavier than I would say the normal containers that come with personal blenders. And they actually also have these ribbed vessels on the side that is supposed to help create more friction and therefore result in a smoother texture. I wanted to see if I could recreate a range of recipes from sauces to marinades to desserts and more in my daily life and see how well it compares to a full-sized blender. So. Let's start with marinades. The first thing I'm making is a Vietnamese style marinade for some pork chops. This is one of my favorite dishes, but I've actually never made it in a blender before and I was curious to see what it would turn out like. I started by grabbing a bunch of aromatics like some shallots, some garlic, and then adding in some brown sugar for sweetness with some fish sauce and white pepper to balance that back out. Also added in some oil, and then I'm adding them back in the blender here, but now that I think about it, I could have actually just combined everything in the vessel itself. And then it was just a matter of blitzing it up. I wanted it to be on the chunkier side, since I usually just finely dice the shallots and garlic by hand and mix everything with a spoon. So I'm really just giving it little pulses slowly here. It worked out beautifully, and you can see bits of those aromatics in the marinade here still, which I'm now using to coat the rest of the pork chops. Once they're all coated, I let them rest overnight in the fridge until just before lunchtime the next day, where I'm just pan frying them and letting all that sugar in the marinade caramelize and give the meat that wonderful golden brown color. What I end up with is a very tender cut of meat that is intensely sweet and savory in flavor because it had a chance to sit overnight in that marinade, which only took maybe under a minute to make in the blender, which is super convenient. I'm honestly more impressed than anything by how it was able to retain some of that chunkier texture, which I was so afraid of losing. Using, but you can see it even better here in this sauce I'm adding on top of the pork chop, which is really just the marinade reduced even further into this sweet, sticky glaze. And then another marinade I tested was the Korean kalbi marinade, another one of my favorite ways to season meat. It started with a mixture of soy sauce, some mirin, water, honey, and black pepper. And then to the blender, I added the more solid ingredients like onions, garlic, and then some of this Korean pear, which is a must try if you've never had it before. This is what it looks like up close here. It is sweeter and juicier than the average pear, but in terms of texture, it's crunchier as well, almost like that of a crisp apple. So it's very refreshing. I'm adding a whole pear into this because I do like my marinades a little on the sweeter side. This did make it a little more difficult to blend because there actually isn't that much liquid going into the blender. But after giving it a few shakes, the pear was able to blend first, which created enough liquid, enough juice to make it easier for the rest of the ingredients to blend together until it formed this sort of thicker consistency. And this is what I'm adding to the soy sauce mixture from earlier, and it's just giving it all that extra flavor. Once they're well mixed, I just went ahead and I'm just adding my short ribs, making sure each of them are completely coated and submerged before letting them rest in the fridge overnight, just soaking up all that marinade, 
letting it do its magic. The next day, all I have to do is just grill them in my cast iron pan with a few onion slices, kind of like how they do at Korean barbecue. And then I just let them rest a minute or two before cutting them up into bite-sized pieces. The blender worked like magic for this marinade because we did want something extra smooth. And what it created was a super smooth texture that helped the marinade coat each piece of meat beautifully, resulting in this sweet and sticky glaze you see clinging onto the kalbi here. This was really, really good. I'm still thinking about it, but honestly, the best part I would say is how it made it so much easier for me to create a kalbi marinade from scratch. All I had to do was put it in a blender and it just did all the work. And so because the blender did such a wonderful job with that kalbi marinade, with that smoothness, I decided to put it to the test by making a sorbet base where smoothness is pretty much like of key importance. This brings us into the dessert test. I've been really wanting to make a sorbet inspired by Taiwanese mango shaved ice. I started with some key ingredients like frozen mango, lime, condensed milk, and passion fruit juice, with the mango going in first and then layering everything else on top. I also wanted to make sure that my passion fruit juice came in liquid form. I bought it frozen, so I just microwaved that really quick. This also makes it easier for everything to blend together in the blender. But because of just how much frozen mango I had tried to cram in there, I completely ignored the maximum filling amount recommended. The blender did have some trouble blending up at first, but again, after a few gentle shakes, it actually smoothed out without me needing to add in any other liquids. And now I have this very, very creamy looking sorbet base. There's like no lumps in there at all. I was genuinely so surprised. But the real test was to have it go through the ice cream machine and to see if it was still able to retain that sort of texture. Noting that I haven't even tried straining this mixture before putting it into the ice cream machine, I was so impressed by how smooth this ended up being. It had almost like a gelato-like texture that was probably also brought about by the condensed milk, but just the blender itself had done a wonderful job of making sure that it was just super smooth. With just how much I rely on my regular size blender to create recipes like this, I was just really pleasantly surprised by how effective this personal blender was at being able to create that same consistency. So similarly, in dessert land, I also whipped up some banana muffins because I had some frozen bananas in my freezer that I needed to get rid of. The best thing about this was probably being able to combine everything in the vessel itself, both the wet and dry ingredients like the eggs, brown sugar, flour, baking powder, spices, oil, vanilla extract, and then letting the blender do all the work. I just had it blend for a full minute or so on its auto setting until I ended up with a thin batter that is once again perfectly smooth. There wasn't any pockets of flour anywhere, which I know sometimes happens in a blender. So that was a nice surprise. My favorite part though is probably just being able to twist the cap on and just let the batter rest in the fridge like that. I didn't have to pour it into an extra container or anything like that. It was just ready to go the next day as well. The perks of using a personal blender, I suppose. The batter does thicken considerably the next day though. I did try pouring it out at first with the special drinking lid that comes with the blender, but that failed miserably, so I resorted to using the ice cream scoop, which works just as well. Now this recipe is one that I've made many, many times before. The muffins turned out great, but what really stood out to me was the ease at which I was able to recreate it. I feel like because everything was done in the blender, it was overall less effort on my part, it was less dishes to clean, but the results were just as great, which is an amazing feeling. This then came in handy when I tried making some roasted butternut squash soup. I started by roasting the two halves of one butternut squash, and while that's cooking in the oven, I'm also making some caramelized onions and shallots that's flavored with a bit of balsamic vinegar and sherry, just for extra flavor. Once all the components are done, I'm just adding them all into the container and also some creme fraiche for extra creaminess and some beef broth. I was a little worried that I might have overfilled it, but it ended up not being a problem. The consistency here is a little thicker than I'd like, but given that I'm basically creating a base puree, I'm not too concerned with that. And now I have a whole container worth of it that's ready to go anytime I wanna enjoy it throughout the week. 
So for example, when I did want to make it into soup, it was really just a matter of reheating it with some more broth and creme fraiche. Super simple, no frills, perfect for a cold winter night in New York. And then later in the week, I was really feeling some pasta, so then I decided to make it into pasta sauce by combining it with some bacon bits, some grated cheese, maybe adding a splash of white wine or two, and then adding in my lumache, and finishing it off with some pine nuts, some more grated cheese, and some fresh parsley, and that's two meals, and more actually. I That really did last me for a, a good week. So then, seeing how well this worked as a sauce, I feel like that opened up a whole new world of possibilities in the sauce realm. So then I decided to create some of my favorite green sauces just to see how well the blender would perform. The first one I'm making is my go-to pesto sauce, which I usually make in my food processor because I want it to be less of a uniform paste. I want it to be somewhat chunkier. I was a little worried at first because I have tried making this in a blender and it just failed. It was too paste like for my liking, but I was able to create the consistency I wanted by leaning into the pulsing mode, which was just pressing the button every other second or so, so that when I pour it out, you can still see small chunks of the ingredients, giving the pesto some more texture even when combined with the pasta. I also just really like how you can still see the small bits of basil clinging onto the noodles here. That's what I want. And then the second sauce I'm making is some chimichurri, which is combining a bunch of herbs such as parsley, cilantro, fresh oregano with some chili and garlic, and then adding in some red wine vinegar and some olive oil. Just like with the pesto though, I want to be careful not to over blend this, so I tried again to just pulse it carefully. I will say this did come out a little more paste-like than I would have liked it to be, so I could have probably gave it like one or two less pulses. But once I served it up with some salmon and some lemon zest, I feel like the difference wasn't as jarring as I thought it would be. I still very much enjoyed the flavor and the texture. And if you serve it up with some bread, it's great to just soak up all that green goodness with. Moving on to the last sauce I'm making, which is a version of guava chutney, because I had a lot of ripe guavas at home and I wanted to create something sweet and savory and maybe a little bit of spice. So I combined the guavas with some parsley, mint leaves, fresh green chilies, ginger, and a little bit of cumin. Also a squeeze of lemon just to give it a little bit of tang. And because the guavas were so ripe, this was able to blend up considerably easily, though the consistency, as you can see here, is on the much thicker side. It's almost like a, a thick custard. I feel like it reminded me of the pandan custard I made in the Thai foods for 24 hours video. I also think I should have maybe added the cumin powder at a later stage. I feel like it didn't really blend too well with the other ingredients. It was still a little lumpy, but I still think it served as a perfect condiment for some of the perota I had at home. The sweet and spicy flavor made for a wonderful dip when paired with that sort of flaky butteriness of the flatbread. So I, I really enjoyed this. So at this point, I feel like I've already tried making some of the more complex recipes, and that's why at the end of these 30 days, I kind of wanted to go back to the basics a little bit, which brings us back to making one or two drinks. Whether it's something like this avocado coffee I made by combining a really ripe avocado with some condensed milk and ice cubes, giving me an almost milkshake-like consistency. I loved this sort of creaminess that goes so well with just a shot of espresso on the very top, creating this cafe-like drink that has this wonderful bitterness of the coffee that balances out the sweetness and creaminess of the avocado and condensed milk or this frappuccino situation made with some coffee ice cubes, more regular ice cubes, some milk, a splash of maple syrup, and a shot of espresso. The reason I'm calling this a frappuccino situation is because this turned out to be less ice slushy like than I had expected it to be, probably because my espresso shot was too hot, probably because I didn't add enough ice cubes, but the wonderful surprise here is that the coffee ended up being a lot frothier because the blender kind of acted as a milk frother, giving it an unexpected creamy frothiness that was actually more enjoyable than the ice slush texture, in, in my opinion. 
I actually just made coffee the other day like that because I liked it so much. And then, because all these coffee drinks turned out so well, it also got me thinking, can this blender grind coffee beans? Mostly because I also don't have a coffee bean grinder at home, so I just wanted to try and see what that was like. So I gave that a try as well, and to my surprise, it actually gave me a fairly fine and even ground, which I guess I just wasn't expecting. Granted that the downside of this is that you aren't really able to control the coffee grind size. It could be too coarse, too uneven, or too fine. But for someone who, again, doesn't have a coffee bean grinder at home, I thought this was a very decent alternative and I was able to enjoy a nice cup of iced latte at home, which I really wasn't expecting at all. So that really was quite the wonderful surprise. And there's that, my 30 days with this $155 personal blender. I was able to recreate a lot of recipes within the cooking realm that I thought I'd only be able to do with a full-size blender or even a food processor. And I was pleasantly surprised by the ease of which I was able to successfully make most of it, actually. Having spent this time together now, I can say that the Beast Blender is a lot more versatile than I had originally thought it to be, and I think it could be a great asset to your kitchen if you're mostly cooking for one or two people, you wanna experiment with some blender recipes, and if you have limited storage space because it really doesn't take up that much space. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other blender recipes that you want me to test out. I am super down to give it a try. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.